So Planck has solved the ultraviolet catastrophe where the expected intensity of light coming out of a black body right here. This is a black body cavity. Some people call it a perfect radiator because the only light that comes out of it is light actually from the temperature of the stuff inside of it. You see, Planck had settled this by saying that the energy of some n oscillation, some nth oscillation is this quantum number, which is really just an index. It's some integer. It doesn't really matter what integer it is. It can be any of them. And um, let's say it's a positive integer in this case, is going to be, well, multiplied by Planck's constant himself and the frequency. So Planck's constant, this h, is an incredibly small number, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joule seconds. And he solves this by saying inside the black body, we cannot have arbitrary amounts of energy because there are shakings here. Now you remember, as, uh, as the frequency increases here, wavelength is going to be smaller, as the frequency increases, HF, the quantum for HF, that amount of energy right there is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger as the frequency gets bigger, right? And as the wavelength gets smaller. So at some point, we're not even going to have enough energy to get to N equals 1. There's not enough thermal energy in here. Let me remind you a couple things that we've got with KT in them, like the average kinetic energy of of an ideal gas. Now, don't confuse black bodies with ideal gases directly, but I'm thinking something like three halves K times T. So the energy, the average kinetic energy of some of these particles in here is governed by the temperature. And in fact, none of them are gonna have enough energy to excite these extremely high energy particles that need to come out as light. And that's okay, but I want to kind of lean into what exactly he is saying. And it really takes Einstein to fully explain this. Einstein says, wait a second, you're saying that there are oscillators in here. There are little particles that are shaking back and forth. Because that's what heat is, right? If something has a temperature, then it has things that are shaking back and forth. But what I'm saying is these vibrations on the walls are quantized. Planck says that. And I agree with him. But you know that electron vibrations, these are electrons that are shaking. Electron vibrations cause what to be emitted? What do you get if you have a charge that is shaking from place to place? If this charge is shaking back and forth, you're going to get light out. That's the whole point of moving charge. Well, not moving, but accelerating charges. And you can bet that if it is in simple harmonic motion, that is, it is accelerating. So Einstein says that you don't just have quantized energy, you have in fact quantized light. He argues that if these little oscillators here that are causing light to come out of there are oscillating electrons, then the energy of a photon, that's his particle of light coming from photo and then ending with N gives him a particle, Then he says that light has an energy which is H times F. That is the energy of a photon of a certain frequency. And that is another earth shattering statement. You don't think it's that weird because you've heard about photons for your whole life. But saying that light is quantized is insane. Remember the entire 18th century was to try to get everybody to believe that light was a wave. We had come from the idea of light as particles because Newton thought that light couldn't be a wave because it didn't diffract. So then we get diffraction and we say that light is a wave and then suddenly you say, no, light's a particle. And oh, dang it, we are never going to get away from this. So I wanted to find one more thing, an electron volt. An electron volt is a handy unit of energy. Handy unit of energy. An electron volt is the kinetic energy that an electron has if you accelerate it through a potential of one volt. So let's go to a little quick calculation of what one electron volt is. I'm going to give you a parallel plate capacitor and I'm going to give you an electron sitting right in the middle right here and oh no, let's put it over here. I want to accelerate it through one volt so I'm going to say this is zero volts and this is one volt and I want the electron to go that one, that way rather, and I'm going to say that its kinetic energy is the, well it's the opposite of its 
change in potential energy, change in potential energy, with a negative sign over right there. I wanna put it absolute, oh my gosh, I'm making a complete mess of this. Let's just say that K is negative delta U. And if we're losing potential energy, then I'm gonna take the opposite of that and get some positive potential. Now, the change in energy is going to be the charge times the voltage, and I don't have my calculator with me, but I happen to remember that the charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, and the voltage is one volt. So I'm gonna multiply those two guys together and I'm gonna get an answer in joules. So it turns out that, wow, one electron volt is, watch this, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So that's kind of fun, and we'll use that as we go into the photoelectric effect. Coming up next. <laughs>